Okay. All right. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are you're preparing us. Lord, as your word says, God, um, that as we follow you, God, you will make us uh, fishers of men. Um, and in the uh, in the very act of following you, God, uh, following your instructions, obeying you, um, and just keeping our eyes on you, Lord, the author, the perfecter of our faith, Lord, and as we do that, That we thank you that you are making us, you are molding us, um, you are changing us. Uh, you are, thank you, Lord. We thank you. Uh, come, Holy Spirit, have your way. Just want to say that we, we need you. Um, yes, Lord. We thank you that uh, you instructed us to, to abide in the vine uh, so that we might be fruitful, Lord, to receive from your Spirit. And Spirit of God, we thank you that um, you pour out without measure, that, Lord, you give, uh, whether it's wisdom, anything that we lack, oh God, you give, uh, God, without reproach, Master, if we would just ask. And so this morning, we we just ask, oh Father God, that whatever is lacking, Lord, that you would fill, God, that you would step in, Lord, um, Lord, and uh, let your strength, oh Father God, let it uh, uh, cover and overwhelm and uh, go beyond our weaknesses, God. We thank you, Master. We thank you. We thank you that you are making us. We thank you that you're shaping us, molding us, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We give you all the praise, Father God. We give you all the glory, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Um, yes, Lord. We, we rise up in our spirit. We rise up in the inner man. You said, be strong in the spirit. We rise up in the spirit. We strong in the grace, uh, the inner man. And uh, we pray that you would strengthen us in the inner man, Lord. Yes, Father God, in your making and molding, I pray that we be strong in the inner man, Father God, that we will not be moved by circumstances, that we will not be moved by, Lord, the mountains or the rivers, God, but, uh, Lord, that we will be, um, Lord, anchored to your word, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you praise. We bless your name. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, let's uh, get started. Um, so we've been looking at uh, sermon construction. Um, I'm not sure if you've uh, you know started working on the you know the sermon title and uh, and the, uh, and your sermon which you have actually you know uh, put up as a um, the sermon theme and the sermon title um, right sermon uh, topic and the title sorry and I'm just opening up that page um, okay we have about uh, thirteen names here and uh, so I just want to encourage the rest of you. Okay, somebody's quickly filling in here. <laughs> okay, just want to encourage the rest of you to also um, go ahead and um, you know start working on it. You know, put that. Uh, what do you um, uh, what do you want to have as your as a sermon topic, and also work on the sermon title. Um, we will take some time to work on this. You know, specifically, I see that you know some some things are kind of uh, jumbled up, right? Uh, what could be a title actually in topic, um, but we'll uh, yeah we'll address that. Uh, but I just want to encourage all of us to you know uh, to work on this, um, and uh, and also when we when we look at sermon construction, right? When we look at the different elements that go into a sermon outline, um, to start experimenting, to start putting things together, um, and uh, yeah, so that will help. Right? You don't have to sit and do it at one shot, uh, at one instance, but you can start working at it 
and even even as we learn uh, these things about uh, uh, you know what goes into a title what goes into the proposition how you can transition from the you know, from the proposition into the out uh, you know the main theme uh, or the main points of the sermon using an integrative uh, sentence uh, uh, to transition um, and so on so uh, you know try that out put that together uh, it'll give clarity when you're actually writing it down right okay so uh, last class we looked at uh, uh, the different aspects of illustrations and the, the how-to of illustrations and also you know what not to do uh, with regard to illustrations and um, so these are uh, useful tools helpful tools uh, but then if we if there's too much of it and it, if it takes the focus away from the sermon um, if you feel that you know it might uh, take the focus away then don't use it you know the, but uh, and also um, um, the time given for the illustration. You know, you be uh, aware of the total time of the message, and uh, use that time judiciously. Right? Use it. Um, uh, be prudent in that because uh, if you feel that it's, it's dragging and it's uh, you know, it's better to avoid that. Right? Okay. So then we look at another important aspect, which is the application. Okay. Which means that. Uh, Here's the message that you have shared, and uh, people have heard it. Now, what do you want them to do with it, right? Um, what is it that people can do with with these wonderful truths that they have heard? Okay, how can they um, apply it? How can they walk in it? Um, how can they? You know, experience the power of these truths in their lives. Is there some way we can? You know, we can instruct. Is there some way that you can teach and say, okay, th these are some things that you need to do. Okay, here's the truth. Um, maybe, okay, let's say a truth about identity. Um, this is who you are. This is what scripture says. Now, how do you bring it home? And how do you uh, make it personal for yourself? And uh, how does the person who's, uh, you know, he's listening, how does that person begin to walk in it? You know, are there some three steps, four steps that you can uh, share? Uh, what do they need to do in order to apply it in their lives so that they can go back, try it out, and uh, experience the truth for themselves? Right? So once a person uh, tries out or applies the truth, and that's when the truth comes alive in their own lives. Right? Um, so the application part of it. Right, so uh, here are some things that we can look at. Right? Um, application makes the text come alive in our contemporary life. You know, we are talking about truth that is eternal, timeless. Right, so in contemporary life, how to make this come alive practically? You know, is there something that you can uh, show, you can teach, so that? It uh, it is applicable in their lives. You know, we, we were talking about you know different kinds of uh, people in the audience, right? So maybe we might have to uh, talk about different ways by which they can apply. You know, maybe a student uh, applying this could be different from a married couple applying the truth. It could be different from a senior person applying the truth. It could be different from a child applying the truth. So. Um, so think of that scenario, think of that audience, and uh, see how can they take this and apply it. Okay. Resisting temptation, now how can the, the young person apply it? How can the married person apply it? You know? So you think of scenarios where they face this challenge, and you talk about practical ways uh, uh, in which they can apply this truth. Okay, so um, you know, says thy word I have hidden in my your, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay, so you want to use that as an application. So how can you hide God's word in your heart? Right, um, a wonderful uh, place to go to is uh, Joshua one eight, where uh, he clearly God tells Joshua, gives him instruction. Um, you know, this word shall not 
this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and you shall observe to uh, and be careful to do what it says, and then you will make your way prosperous. So is that something that you want to you know, use as an application, you know, confessing the word, meditating on the word, thinking deeply about the word, obeying the word, um, you know, something like that, right? So um, the application and and um, how can they do that, right? Um, also, application helps in uh, dealing with some of the, you know, the needs, everyday needs, everyday issues, challenges that they might face, that the congregation might face. So again, depending on um, the, the, you know, the demographics of it, of the congregation, or, you know, uh, their background, uh, the age, uh, their season in life, um, the challenges, you know, the issues they fe uh, face might be different. So apply that. Okay. Uh, how do we apply? Um, uh, one of the things is to make it very clear. Okay. Um, the effective, uh, the clearer it is, or the, the clarity of the application would help in um, uh, in the effectiveness of it. Okay, so the person might say, "Okay, I I did this. I did step one, step two, and this helped." Okay, um, now it need not always be something that I do. You know, some certain things could be just a shift in mindset, right? Um, certain messages are that way maybe you're talking about end times maybe you're talking about you know something else where the application would be just a, a, a line aligning to the word of god uh, maybe an expectation of things to come and uh, of or being aware of the reality of this uh, you know for a, a example end times we know that okay the, the, uh, 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 especially when you see um, I don't know if it's John or uh, the Book of Acts, where, um, yeah, uh, it says that uh, you know the same way the Lord uh, He will come. You know, like uh, Acts chapter one and verse eleven, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Right. Um, so it will be a, just a shift. Hey, the same way he ascended, well, the first coming, the same way he ascended, uh, in the same manner he will come. The reality of that. So it, maybe it's just a shift in our thinking. You know, we're just saying, okay, I don't know when he when he'll come. It's I'm not even expecting that. But the fact that there is the reality of his coming, right? So it'll just be alignment of that, and of course, certain things that you can actually do when it comes to maybe spiritual disciplines of you know reading the word or worship and so on or maybe it's something to do with attitude um, in relating to people and uh, you know um, where we uh, say uh, where we look at uh, you know let's say husband and wife and uh, talks about um, how um, you know you treat your wife with uh, understanding so that your prayers are not um, uh, or not hindered, so maybe it's uh, it's something that uh, that needs to be done, that that kind of adjustment that needs to be done um, uh, by the husband or by the by the spouse, like by each of them. So um, so this would be you know these would be the application um, points that we need to think about. Okay, so um, it's good to have an application. Okay, now you go back and do it. Okay. Um, it could be just one thing. Uh, it could be maybe uh, maybe three or five things that people need to try out, people need to work out, people need to put to practice in their lives. But it's good to be clear and and spell that out. Okay. Um, okay. So let's look at the time of the application. Okay. So we need to understand that application is not the conclusion. Conclusion can conclusion is which comes after the application. Right. Um, so the application, of course, could be highlighted, could be emphasized in the conclusion as well. Okay. Um, now, when we let's say you, we have five things to say, five points in the sermon, the application could be at the end of every point. Okay. Which means that uh, you know you we share a uh, you know a point, uh, we make a you know, distinct point. 
in the sermon and uh, the application could be at the end of it you know it could be that way that uh, the point is in is, is such a manner that it necessitates an application okay maybe we are looking at uh, 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 for example we are looking at maybe spiritual disciplines and we're saying that uh, you're talking about prayer talking about worship, you're talking about uh, meditating on the Word of God, maybe confessing, declaring the Word of God. So each of this, as we, you know, as we talk about prayer, uh, and there will be an application, right? You can, you can actually share an application saying, okay, um, you know, do you have a set time and a set place? And something practical saying, you have a set time, you have a set place, it makes it easier uh, and uh, for us to get into a routine of uh, praying. Okay. Or something, some other things like, um, you know, you maybe have certain things like what to pray for. You start with that and then you go on to, you know, or things like that. Um, maybe it's worship, you know, uh, you have an application for that, you know, start. Uh, we don't feel like worshiping, uh, but just, you know, start to sing in tongues. Uh, and just walk around just singing in tongues and and then pretty soon, you know, you will you will be worshiping or meditate on one aspect of the word of God. You know, read the Psalms and try singing out the Psalms and and something like that, right? Uh, to worship and word and uh, you know, reading the word and so on. So each of these points could have an application. Okay, so it's good to make the point, uh, share the application, move on to the next point, share the application, or it could be a message where each of these points, you know, it's uh, uh, maybe four or five points, and each of these points are building up to a final point, right? So um, it's it's not uh, it, it's a point which builds on the second one, builds on the first one, third one builds on the uh, you know the first two, and so on. So in in such a scenario, it's it's good to have the application right at the end. You know, we've shared everything, and uh, and you get into the application and say, okay, these are three things that you need to do in your life. And um, um, it may be the points we're just talking about, um, uh, you know, about renewing the mind, the different scenarios, the, 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 the dangers of not renewing the mind, where it can uh, lead us to the kind of trap it can lead us to. And at the end, we talk about, you know, this is what we do uh, with the word of God in order to renew our, mind renew our thinking right so um so those are two approaches right we share at the end of every main point or sub point or towards the right at the end okay so um so that's about the application part of it so it's it's very very um you know, very important to do that. And also, uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, uh, let it be something that you've tried out in your own life, you know, uh, much like the other aspects of what we're teaching, you know, something that we do and then we teach. Uh, similarly, uh, let it be something that, you know, maybe you personally tried out and uh, you've seen it work or you've tried out and you're still struggling with it, you're challenged with it, but you know that um, this is it. Um, uh, so it's good to share that, um, uh, that you know that's that you've tried out in your own life, right? Uh, application. Then uh, we come to the conclusion of the message. So we we've gone through the entire uh, message. We've shared the uh, the conclusion. I'm share the application, uh, and then we conclude. Okay. So conclusion. Uh, we normally uh, you know it, it can be. Um, it can be a simple prayer. It can be a, a summary of uh, all that we have shared, uh, and then uh, you know, making up, making maybe a, a final statement about the message, um, an encouraging the an encouraging statement, and 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 then ending it there and handing it back to you know whoever invited. Uh, normally, you know, we we finish, we complete, we conclude with prayer. Uh, also, you know, it is. Uh, it is if, if the you know uh, if the message also and also the if it's a service um, then uh, uh, you can actually go into a ministry time right so um, 
so the conclusion uh, will end or will flow into a ministry time so you can facilitate that as well so it can be uh, an altar call uh, it can be um, uh, an invitation for commitment an invitation for um, uh, for recommitment an invitation to change right invitation to pray invitation to um, you know, repent and make right with God, whatever. Um, so that can be part of the uh, conclusion as well, right? So uh, we can conclude in that manner. So the thing to avoid is not to add uh, new material in the conclusion. Right? We, we've also already talked about it. We've already shared the application bit. Um, but um, now, now you're landing the plane. Right? It's best not to add any more. You know, and you know, I just have three more things to say, and uh, we might you know lose the congregation. Um, you know, lose the interest of the congregation, uh, of the audience. So it's best not to uh, add any more new things. Um, and another thing. And another thing. Right? Uh, do not add um, while uh, concluding. Right? Um, I, I remember, uh, uh, you know, uh, an old-time pastor. He's not there anymore. He passed away, but uh, um, he had a real problem concluding. You know, it'd be like uh, it's like the plane which is going on top, just waiting for the runway. It just comes down. We're thinking, okay, it's, it's over, it's over, and then it just come. You know, he just takes off again, and he's talking about another thing, and then we, we think that okay, he's landing now finally, and then it, you know, suddenly he takes off again. Um, I was just reminded of that, you know, when, when talking about conclusion. So uh, let the hearer or the hearers get that kind of a feeling, right? Uh, when you want to land, you just land it, right? Um, finish with a good conclusion. And uh, a conclusion can be really powerful. Um, uh, one of the things to, uh, to, um, to really, um, um, to really, um, you know, facilitate in the conclusion is uh, is this that inviting people to encounter um, the power of the truth that we just shared okay um, encounter the power of God encounter the person uh, of the Holy Spirit um, and uh, you know it's a it's a great time to, to really facilitate that to invite people to draw people to that place and say um, why don't you open up your life and experience the power of God now you heard about it now God is more than willing to confirm the hearing of the word he's watching over the word to perform it so now would you like to reach out and invite would you like to you know draw close to him and invite him to work, you know, to take people through that time of prayer, to to facilitate an encounter with God, an encounter the person of God, with the love of God. Depends on what the message has been. And sometimes, you know, the surprising thing is that um, this maybe uh, content of the message is A, but then uh, you know people receive B. You know, uh, I remember. It was, uh, I think, uh, one of the messages which Pastor shared, and it was about financial stewardship. I forget, you know, something about workplace, something about finances. Um, but at, at the end of it, the person actually gave his heart to the Lord, and uh, and that was, you know, how it was. It the message was on something else, and at the end of it, uh, the person testified. He wrote back saying, you know, I gave my heart to the Lord. I gave my heart to Jesus, um, and uh, yeah. So that's what uh, happened. Um, also, in the conclusion, you can always have uh, time, an invitation for those who do not know the Lord to um, to receive Jesus, right, um, and. It depends again if it's a Sunday morning service where you're preaching, and if you know if that is you know that there could be people who are uh, you know who do not know Jesus in the congregation, and you could you know you could do that. Um, but if it's if it's a congregation, if it's a group that it's you know if it's a leadership group, and you know that it's you know, you're addressing people who are who are all born again, then of course you know there's no necessity to do that, right? Um, so uh, yeah. 
so just coming back to uh, invite people to encounter the power of the truth that we shared invite people to encounter the power of the god um, whom you introduced and uh, what we shared about okay so um so that would be uh, a great way to conclude the message where people go back they know what to do okay there's this application um, that they need to try out and do at the same time they've been empowered uh, by the spirit of god to walk in the truth you know they made a decision um, saying that okay i i want to give i, I want to give this uh, i'm uh, you know I, I really don't know the you know the, the details of it but um, my heart is for this you know i want to uh, try i want to open up the door of my heart and I love God to intervene in these things um I don't know what's going to look like but um but I'm I'm willing to give it a try right um I I you know especially when it comes to repentance and things like that and you know maybe there's so much of hardness of heart because there's pain and so on but um if the person just opens the door just a little bit saying you know I am willing okay emotionally I'm not able right emotionally when i think about it i'm still getting i'm i'm, I'm getting all stirred up uh, emotionally i'm not in the right in that place yet but having heard you know i'm willing like just like peter right peter saying god i'm the fisherman i am the one with the expertise i've fished all night and i've caught nothing i know these you know it's like saying you know, i know these waters i know my skill i i know what has happened and i'm tired i'm tired of trying over and over and over again nevertheless at your word i will let down the net right so even if people come to that place saying you know i tried it has not worked uh, i'm tired but you know i'm i'm willing i'm willing to uh, i don't feel it emotionally but i'm you know i'm i'm just deciding okay let me do this okay now that can be helped in the conclusion in the time of you know praying and ministry and, and it can be a powerful time so um like many times you know when we start off we uh, you know sharing a word we we just want to start and finish and you know be done away with uh, or maybe we you know we want to make a good presentation and people and we want to um you know we want to finish and and uh, and be done with it but the fact is to to just wait on god and say okay what more lord you know in the conclusion um you know how how do you want to help these people right how do you want to uh, what do you want to move in right um and of course we've learned about the gifts of the spirit um word of knowledge word of wisdom uh gifts of healings miracles and tongues interpretation of tongues tongues faith and so on so uh, just be open and uh, and invite uh, you know just be open and invite the holy spirit and say holy spirit come you know you move uh, you have your way you know of course provided we have the freedom to do this right we have the freedom to do this and uh, we know what kind of uh, meeting it is what kind of an audience it is and uh, and so on uh, and and uh, and god will give some very creative ways like even if uh, you know if it's uh, if it's let's say a congregation which is not really open to um the uh, you know the ministering in this manner right they're not open and uh, um with well, the church maybe it's a it's a kind of a denomination that's not open but you can do it in creative ways right you don't have to say you know this says thus says the lord or i just sense that god's you don't have to do that you can just pray along those lines and say you know if uh, if there's anyone um you know who who is uh, you know, who's been tormented by uh, nightmares over and over again and you've been you know this week you've been having some um you know terrible nightmares and you wake up Uh, with a cold sweat and um let's you know let's just pray for that uh you know it can be as simple as that uh, maybe god has shown you vividly um you know uh, the scenario but you don't have to you know uh, uh, point out or you don't have to say this out and ask a person to get up if it's a, a congregation which is not really open to these kind of things okay or you know uh, maybe it's it's like uh, 
uh, its congregation, which is also again not open to the move of the spirit, and uh, we can just pray. You know, this is what Scripture says that uh, you ask and you receive, and I believe that uh, this is for every believer that uh, God wants to fill, and He will do that. So, without dwelling too much, you know, uh, on that, you know, are you hungry for more of God? Just lift your hands and receive right now, and uh, and you know, and people will respond in faith and receive uh, the infilling of the Spirit, right? of the Holy Spirit. So uh, it's, it can be a powerful time, right? Okay. Um, then, um, what about the language? You know, we, we, we will uh, spend some time uh, talking about uh, you know, presentation and, and so on. Um, and there is also another you know, chapter on uh, like expecting people to respond or leading people to respond um, and uh, there's a chapter on and some practical instructions but um, um, about the language right the language we use uh, well first of all the language itself if it's a if it's an audience which uh, does not understand your language it's 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 best to have uh, someone uh, interpret it or translate it um, and it will be so much uh, uh, you know beneficial Right, like Paul says in Corinthians, uh, one Corinthians fourteen. Right, he says, uh, you know, if I, well, I, I do give thanks in tongues, but the person who is, uh, you know, uh, receiving, or a person who is in the place of the uninformed, if he is not able to understand, how will he say Amen to it? Right, um, talking about the message in tongues without the interpretation. So, uh, well, if it's uh, you know, even if you feel that okay, people might not get, uh, people might have a, you know, a, some kind of a vague understanding, but they they will not be benefited. Uh, then think of, you know, having a translator. And I think I shared that example where uh, the first day of the me, you know, first session of the meeting, uh, just went all out and shared, and uh, and then we realized that uh, you know. Uh, uh, at least 80 percent of them were really comfortable in Hindi, and it would have really blessed them if we had translation in Hindi. So once we had the translation, then we could notice a complete shift in the way they respond, the way they receive the message. Right. So uh, the language uh, very, is very very important. So think about it, um, and also the the words that we. Uh, language in terms of the words that we use, um, the way that we speak, right? Uh, it's best if it's uh, simple, if it's clear, uh, and if it's something that everybody can relate to and understand. Okay. Um, if we use words that are hard to understand, if we use um, uh, words that are, uh, you know, um, they're going to be complicated, um, then it's best to uh, explain it. Right, uh, which means that uh, we're going to take some time time to actually explain those words. Uh, then it will make sense. Um, otherwise, uh, it will not make sense. Right. Uh, so, uh, especially you know when it comes to um, let's say a congregation which is not ch church, uh, which doesn't have a church background. You know, you'd be giving an, uh, um, you're you're doing an outreach or uh, yeah, it's a you know even it's a, it's an outreach kind of a thing. Right, maybe it's a school uh, campus where it's a mixed crowd. So uh, just be careful about the words. Right, uh, when speaking in church, salvation, sanctification, justification, uh, repentance—you know—all these are uh, a, a common language. Right, we we understand, and uh, and uh, we just use it, and we know that it will be understood. Right, and even that sometimes you know we need to. Explain it. So, if it's a congregation, if it's a group, if it's an audience that uh, will not uh, really understand this terminology, think about it. You know, what is the background of the people? Okay, these are all, let's say, working professionals, and uh, you have all kinds of people with different kinds of worldviews. Um, so, it's best to avoid, you know, jargon. It's best to avoid, or it is important, critical that we avoid um, jargon and explain. You know the concept without using the jargon. Now it's going to take a little more effort because, you know, for us naturally, it's 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 best to say you know all those call, call in the name of the Lord will be saved, right? Um, and uh, I realize I made that mistake um, you know, very recently. 
and you remember I was sharing about Saturday's meeting. Um, we're talking about you know uh, it was a mixed co congregation, but you know, people want um, it, it, we wanted to talk about breakthrough worship, and uh, in the middle of it, in the confession, when we're talking about saying it, singing it, and um, you know um, shouting it, uh, shouting the truth. In the middle of it, um, I just shared about quickly share the gospel, right? Uh, Romans ten, you know, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, right, you will be saved. And so, just an invitation, but did not explain what that saved meant, right? Uh, so, um, it would have been looking back and reflecting and reviewing what I shared. I just thought, you know, it would have been great if I had. Uh, it would have been, you know, really beneficial for the audience if I had shared about. Okay, what does save, you know, men? Uh, what does it mean, you know? Uh, yeah. Okay, Charles, you have a question. Yeah, I have. Um, I'm sorry, I am on point four eight one. That is about conclusion. Okay. Uh, you you hear someone saying, as I'm concluding, and then talks and talks and talks. So in conclusion, mm. and talks and talks and talks. Uh, therefore, as I'm ending. Talks and talks and talks. Ah, uh, so uh, I think this is my final thing. This is my final verse. Then I will be ending, and you find it is now uh, taking like five, even ten minutes. Would that be as a result of not preparing? What mm -hmm. What would bring that? Thank you. Yeah, several things, right? It could be. Hey, I'm just excited. It went really well. You know, the message went really well. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just excited. I, I've got a captive audience now, and I want to, you know, download everything that I have on you. Right? It could be that, or maybe, uh, you know, genuinely the person forgot, right, and uh, just wants to, uh, you know, share that, and uh, not being mindful of the time. Um, and it could, be, it could be a cultural thing as well. You know, sometimes, um, uh, the, like certain places. 15 minutes is all you have, right? And you make use of the 15 minutes and you do that. But in some places, it's like the more you speak, the more spiritual it is, right? So somebody coming from that background would uh, would probably, you know, just go on. And specifically, I'm sorry, but specifically about this, um, it can be also from a place of humor, like, like, so, you know, I normally have three conclusions or four conclusions. Uh, you know, and it's it's maybe an accepted thing in that circle. And uh, you know, pastor is just joking. You know, if it's only when it comes to the third conclusion, you know, does it really matter? Three is, of course, scriptural. <laughs> Whatever. You know, maybe it's it comes from that place. Uh, yeah. So it could be several reasons. But really, you know, um, maybe once or twice people might be. Uh, might excuse you, you know. Otherwise, they might think the person is insincere, you know, and uh, it really uh, wearies the hearer, right? Yeah, yeah. Those I think are the reasons why some people do that. Yeah. Um, but I just want to, you know, say, you know, it's it's very difficult to um, speak. Um, I mean, difficult in the sense it's challenging to speak in a short time. You know, when you have maybe 10 minutes, maybe you have 15 minutes. Um, it's, it's, it's a real challenge because um, you need to present things precisely, concisely. And at the same time, you know, you want to uh, right, uh, cover the topic and do justice to the topic. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great skill if we can you know, practice that. Um, yeah, that's a very good point, uh, Sam. I'm guilty of this. <laughs> That's why you know I just uh, I can I can resonate you know I'm I can resonate with what you said because we spend time on the intro we spend time on the body the thing and um, we just say okay I'll conclude it right and uh, conclusion is very very uh, crucial very important um, it's like you know it's like you know of course the grace of God covers you know praise God. For his grace, but um, it's good to have prayed through the conclusion, you know, with him, and prepared. Like Lord, what? How do you want the 
conclusion to go. Now, how do you want me to end it? What do you want to do, Lord? Uh, and it's wonderful. The Lord, uh, you know, uh, he shares his heart, right? He points certain things, and this is what I want you to do. And uh, and and also to be, you know, uh, to be aware, to be mindful, to be sensitive, uh, even as you are ministering. And um, yeah, so Lord, uh, yeah, so that's absolutely important. You know, we spend a lot of time on all the other things, and uh, we we think that we can actually conclude, and we don't really pray through it. Uh, or at least think about it. It's important. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So yeah, um, we're talking about language, right? So uh, the words that we use. Um, um, yeah. Okay, Charles. So writing an introduction after the conclusion, or you start from the end and go. Yeah. I mean, if it works, that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so you know, using good, um, using the right words. Okay, um, uh, also uh, making sure that uh, you know what what is the kind of audience. You know, you cut down on Christian jargon, um, and uh, you know, based on the audience, of course, if it's if it's the regular church going uh, audience, then they would understand. There's no need to break down things and uh, you know uh, simplify things than how they are already uh, what they are already okay um now this is um you know uh, i just found this interesting this is by a uh, by an indian politician uh, by name shashi tarur he's known for using um you know high sounding words and in his language and uh, i think many people came to know a lot of words uh, you know, so this is uh, something he tweeted this apparently, you know, many years ago. Exasperating farrago of distortions, misrepresentations, and outright lies being broadcast by an unprincipled showman masquerading as a journalist. You know, um, yeah, it's going to take some time <laughs> to, you know, cut through this uh, the kind of a language and uh, and really understand. I just, you know, using that as an, as an example. Uh, I don't know if uh, you know. Some of you would have, you know, in, uh, heard probably or watched interviews of Sashi Tharoor. Um, oh yeah, we have some words here. Some words that um, that he has used, and uh, in some of the interviews, uh, let me just give a couple of those. Uh, I think this is interesting. Um, okay, look at that first word. <laughs> Hippopoto monstrous. I, I, I can't even pronounce it. Okay, so apparently it's it's a fear of long words. It is a long word by itself, and uh, it's a fear of long words. And uh, he used it in one of the interviews. Um, and second one, you know, the action or habit of estimating something as worthless. You know, fluxion or heliification. I I can't even say it. Um, but he, you know, he. Uh, is said to have used this in his. Uh, I, I forget if it's an article or uh, uh, you know or an interview and things like that. So anyway, just to be mindful of the words, you know, maybe uh, for you as a person, you're used to it, but just think about it. Not think twice. Um, will this help uh, the audience? Right. Uh, so it's one way of uh, uh, being empathetic. One way of esteeming others better than yourself. You know, putting it to practice, saying okay. Uh, will this help? So we use the language to communicate clearly. Uh, do not use uh, scholastic language. Um, choose words that the congregation will understand. Um, also, avoid sentences with too many words. You know, like um, I think this is a classic example. Um, well, I know that you know when we go through the epistles, we see some long sentences, right? Um, and uh, well, it's good that is there in print. We break down, we study it, uh, but when it, you know, when we when we say it out, uh, uh, it's it's totally different, and uh, uh, we, we we lose people, we lose them, uh, lose their attention halfway through, right? Um, so it's good to use words, uh, sentences that are short and. Uh, uh, something that uh, people will understand, right? Okay, never use language to impress. Uh, we are there to, uh, you know, whatever we are sharing is to edify. It's never to impress or show people, you know, how much we 
uh, uh, you know, how well we can speak, uh, how articulate we are, and it's it's never to uh, show uh, the, our audience, you know, how much we know. It's never that. I think we dealt with that in the earlier, you know, earlier chapters. We we're talking about. Asking the messenger, right? Uh, the message is important. The message is equally important. Uh, when we are dealt with you know, the qualifications, the character, and and the things of our heart, and so on. So, um, uh, so never, you know, share uh, in, in such a in, in such a way uh, in order to our skill, display our ability. Okay. Um, uh, the correct pronunciation of the word is also very very important. Um, you know, sometimes we learn the words wrong, and we use the words uh, in a wrong way, right? Um, so when people hear it over and over again, they kind of cringe. Okay, this person is using the word wrong. So, uh, well, correction can come in different ways. I, I remember one person, uh, she called me and said, uh, um, you know, uh, this is, this is with regard to some of the announcements that I had made, voiceovers that I recorded for the church announcements. And she called and said, uh, Pastor, the way you pronounce this is different. It actually made a difference. I made a mistake in uh, pronouncing these words, you know, where and were. So for me, there was no difference. Right? I know the, the, different, the words are different, but the way I learned it, it's like there's no difference. So I will use, I will say, uh, you know, I'll pronounce both the words as where. Okay, where are you coming from? The answers were in the. I, I will not say were. I will say the answers were in the in the question itself. Right. Um, so uh, so I'm glad that this person uh, just called and said, uh, you know, Pastor, I think you need to. She she actually was teaching English, um, spoken English in um, institute. So for her, obviously, it must have been terrible uh, to hear this. You know, she must have been teaching this over and over to the students, and to hear this, you know, wrong uh, pronunciation over and over again every Sunday in the announcements. I think it's some uh, some announcement is repeated. So uh, anyway, she. Uh, it, I'm glad that she actually pointed that out. And and like this, certain other words. You know, I think I learned it wrong. Uh, because I was taught wrong, so I learned it wrong. So I, this this word is I know environment, but I learned it as environment. So you know I will say it. And, and the other day, I think it was my daughter who said, "What did you say?" And she was so surprised, shocked that I was saying environment. And then uh, they had a good laugh, and then said, "Hey, it's actually environment." Right. So. Um, the words that we use, it's it's best uh, if we know the pronunciation. And now, of course, it's very, very um, simple. We just go online and check how to pronounce this, and you hear it, right? Of course, the challenge is it, it could be an American English or a British English. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's English, so you can, you know, uh, I'm talking about English, of course, but in your own language also, you know, whether it's... Um, you know, whatever language that um, that you are communicating the message in, right? It's good to it. It's applicable as well, right? So you uh, learn to pronounce it well, so that uh, it doesn't it it doesn't become a barrier to the person who's listening. Okay, okay. So um, so that's about language. So next class we look at different forms of delivery. You know, how can I? Uh, well, the message is uh, this uh, I've put together, but um, you know, how do I? say it, right? Uh, how do I present it? We look at the different ways we can present it. Um, probably we'll also try to um, spend some time you know, just finalizing our sermon topic and the uh, sermon title, OK? OK, so you have a good weekend. God bless you. Uh, we'll meet again uh, next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pastor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you Pastor.